is going on live and proud crowd welcome back to another video here for sure one of the things we're going to be doing constantly waiting for cars to pass my house because there's so much traffic one of the things we're going to be doing today is installing the new starter on the blue first gen we call it the resto gens just because it's a restoration first gen project semi restoration semi aftermarket but we're just calling it the resto gen and we've got a little bit of news for the whistling diesel dually as well so i did actually get in touch with a couple dealerships because apparently this is a super hard part to find so i went into a napa AutoZone, O'Reilly, all these different places, and nobody has one in stock. Apparently it's a very, very difficult part to get because they don't break. You know, they're not supposed to break because they're not a wearing product. They don't wear down. It's not like a brake pad or an oil filter or a belt. It, it doesn't, they don't wear down. It's just a bolt that runs through it to help it align where it's supposed to be so that it holds your brake caliper in place. That's all it's for. Line it up in the right spot, not really, wear down over time and then need to be replaced so it's a really tough part to find i did get in touch with one dealership though that said they could get one for me but it'll be at least four days and it's a 400 dollars part i could try to go to a junkyard and take some jacks and some tools and try to find a used one that's hopefully not off of a completely rotted out truck but that's if i can find a truck even that has good parts that's not already been completely stripped down but for now we're gonna get to installing a starter on this blue first gen here is the resto gen let's get the hood popped because we're gonna need it up and that is the location where the new starter has got to go I'm gonna get some paper towels some shop towels real quick and wipe that down wipe down the inside area right there I'm um, just kind of clean it up a little bit uh, just so it's not so messy when we are installing the starter uh, but other than that I mean it's pretty self-explanatory you put the three bolts in that mounted up to like the bell housing and then you fasten in the positive cable to the top of it and the little negative cable and then that's pretty much it I mean that's about as simple as it gets just put it back where it was and run the bolts back in let's get this installation done hooked back up but we do need to stabilize this battery better <laughs> and actually fasten it in the truck so we are going to hook the positive and negative up real quick and see if the truck will just fire up we're gonna give this thing a start you can see the nice shiny new stutter back down in there everything's fastened in tight and snug battery's hooked up so let's see if this thing fires right up or if it still has an issue. Let's give it a whirl here. Just like new. I don't know how many of you guys saw, but we got the interior pretty well buttoned up other than the headliner and the rest of the plastics that go in after you get the headliner put in place. But we got the dash in, door panels painted and in, we've got seats in, we've got the carpet in the back all done, we've got uh, the center console we're gonna be dropping off to get upholstered so it matches the seats we have our center console for an armrest and storage and stuff um, pretty much everything though is looking great other than needing to clean some stuff up another thing i'd actually like to do to the front end of this truck real quick is get the bumper plastics taken off since i'm already missing some of them anyway So we do actually know what the part is that broke and it's considered to be the rear parking brake assembly. However, the problem with that part is Mopar does not produce it anymore. So if I'm gonna find it, it has to be through a dealer who happens to have one on the shelf. I found one dealership that said they might be able to get me one, but they said it would be upwards of $400. So I'm gonna keep looking just because that seems a little bit crazy for the one part. That's what we need to properly be able to break with that truck. how important that rear brake is on this back driver side until you can't use it the actual brake pads themselves and the caliper bracket are sitting back here so what I'm gonna try to do 
is pop these dualies off and get to, if I can, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, I've never dealt with this before, but I try to get to that part that's broken so I can get it off and actually take it around to help identify the part that I'm looking for. I thought I was gonna be able to take these wheels off and start disassembling, but my one and a quarter, or also known as the 32 millimeter, is too small still. That's how big these lug nuts are because they did a 10 lug conversion on the rear end of this thing. Holy cannoli. You know, my goal was to actually find the part that I needed for this truck, which I went all over town today looking for parts, calling places, everything. Nobody had one in stock and I couldn't even tell for sure if they actually didn't have one or not because I didn't know what it was called and I'm just showing them this picture and they're just like, oh, uh, go to the dealership. Uh, like they don't know. So I'm trying to get this off now. And that was my backup plan. I was like, well, at least I could assess the damage and get the wheels and tires off and then get that all tore apart so we could actually look into it. That's not happening right now. That's an easy solution though. All I have to do is go to an auto parts store in the morning or a hardware store and get a bigger socket. And then that's all I need to take that off. And then at least I can get to working on the rear end of this. If any of you guys out there know what I need to fix this, let me show you. So I had a lot of people tell me in the comment section, oh, it's a caliper bracket and it's not, a caliper bracket. There's four studs that come out of it. One, two, and there's two on the opposite side. It just makes a square. And then there's these ears that come off of it on the top and the same thing on the bottom. They're slightly different in size, but they look very, very similar. And essentially what that does is just threads through and the only thing connected to it is the brake dust shield and those two points there and the four studs coming out of it to slide onto the end of the axle. And that is to position your brake caliper, you know, to stop this monster. And so what I'm trying to find is that portion, not the brake caliper, not the caliper bracket, which is in the bed right now. This portion right here, okay? And if anybody knows for sure, is there any big axle changes or differences from 2003 to 2011 trucks? I've been looking all over online and the only things that I can find are this part right here. It's called a, a parking brake assembly adapter assembly or something like that. And I'm only finding that, but it looks identical to that part. It's ex It looks exactly like what I need, but it says it's only for 2009 to 11 trucks, which is kind of like, okay, 2009 to 2011. But then I found on another website, it says Ram changed over to AAM axles for the fronts and rears. And that is from 2003 to 2012 or 13 models. I was like, okay. So if all the axles were the same, was that mounting point for the caliper bracket the same or not? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is it the same or is it not the same? Because if it is the same, then I found plenty of those and I can just buy that part and get it shipped in. Like 150 bucks for a brand new one. But if it's not the same, I gotta know because that means I have to go searching through a junkyard to try to find that part. Because according to the dealership that I went by, if they were looking up the right part that is, they said, oh, we can't find that part. It's been discontinued. You can't get it, whatever. Lots of people asking why I would buy these two trucks off of Whistling Diesel. And of course, the haters have their opinion. The people that are just loyal viewers that enjoy the content, they've just been like, oh, it's just super cool. Not sure why you'd spend that kind of money on those trucks other than cool factor, but you know, good for you. Uh, but I just kind of want to explain a little more thoroughly why in my situation it makes sense to buy these things. I don't need to explain myself. I know there's gonna be people that are like, oh my gosh, don't explain yourself, you don't have to. I'm not doing it for the haters, I'm doing it just so all my viewers can have a better understanding of why. This truck, for example, was just under $30,000 and that price tag at first even made me think, what on earth, dude? There's no way that truck's worth that kind of money. I almost had to like metaphorically slap myself in the face. Why am I getting so wrapped up on the price of the truck? It's more what's the value of the truck to the business. And that is why I bought this truck and that is exactly why I bought the first gen. You see, I didn't buy them because I thought, oh, these trucks are worth every penny to just like daily drive and then sell five years down the road. I bought the trucks because of the business potential that they could bring to the company. And now Loud and Proud LLC is the company that owns the clothing brand lnpgear.com. That is where we sell, you know, shirts and hats and hoodies and keychains and decals and all kinds of accessories and all kinds of stuff towards winning our trucks. Now, what does this have to do with that? 
Well, if this truck in that first gen bring new viewers to the channel, new viewers mean new customers, new customers means more sales, more sales means more profits for the business. So essentially what it comes down to is this was more of a business strategy, not necessarily, oh my gosh, I, those trucks are just so cool, I gotta have one. For most people that wanted the trucks, that's why they wanted them. The reason I bought the trucks is because when it comes to a business, and being in the same field and line of business, very similar to what Cody does on his channel and his platform, it made sense to acquire the trucks to bring new people to the channel, to the platform, whether it's a massive explosion in growth or not a massive explosion in growth, that's kind of irrelevant because regardless, there's only gonna be a positive side to it, not a negative. I mean, all I'm doing is making videos like I was before, the difference is instead of buying some random truck off Facebook Marketplace that nobody recognizes, nobody cares for, you kind of have to build up the character of the truck for people to actually get interested in it. These trucks already have a history with somebody that gave them a reputation, therefore people are naturally gonna wanna see what's going on with them and tune in to watch the videos. And that is the exact reason why I spent almost $60,000 between this truck and the other one. And I also had a bunch of people asking how wide the truck was, I don't know the exact offset of the wheels. I didn't buy them. I didn't put them on the truck. I don't know. But I'm going to guess they're about a negative 260-ish to 280. That's just a ballpark. Just a complete guess. But the truck measures 110 inches wide. And my door here measures 116. So as you can imagine, there's not much room on either side of the tire when you pull this thing in the shop. So I want to show you guys something else here really quick. So if you see this hat, it's a great looking hat. It's very comfortable. It's nice. It's got an adjustable back, all this other stuff. But it's not the hats that we ordered. Four different styles actually that we had to restock recently. And when we restocked them, we ordered them with a solid front and a mesh back like this one. When they came in, they came in with a solid front and a solid back. Now that's fine. I just know that most of my audience prefers the mesh back for breathability and comfort in hot days out in the sun. However, that doesn't mean these are a bad hat. They're just not as breathable, you know, so that's kind of the downfall to them. However, so what we ended up getting was a big refund for a portion of the order and we had to place a new order, but they gave us a big refund for a portion of the order to kind of like make up for the mistake. But what we're actually gonna do with that opportunity, instead of just keeping these hats at 30 bucks, which is normally what we have to sell them at, we're gonna take that as an opportunity, since we got these so much cheaper, to sell them to you guys a lot cheaper. So ordinarily, these hats, we have to sell them for 30 bucks a piece, but since we got a huge refund for this portion of the shipment for these four styles that were all made solid and they were supposed to be half solid, half mesh. We're actually marking the ones that were part of that mishap order down to $20 a hat, which is something we've never been able to do before. And that's not something that we're gonna be able to offer very long. Until these sell out, that's it. Once they're sold out, they're gone. We're not gonna be able to like restock a bunch of hats and put them up for 20 bucks a piece. That's normally not something we can do. But Reagan and I talked it over and I'm like, well, I said I could try to sell them for 30 bucks a piece again. But I'm like, I feel like if they gave me a huge discount on the products because they messed them up, I might as well give them a huge discount on the hats so they can save some money and maybe some people like this style more. So anyways, if you wanna grab one of these hats that have the solid front and solid back, they are available on the store only until they sell out and then they'll be gone. Plans that I had all lined up for today's video, none of them really panned out, unfortunately. Just hopefully you guys enjoyed the video anyhow and we can get you guys something a little bit better for tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. If you guys wanna enter our truck of the month that we're giving away, you can head on over to lmpgear.com and every $1 is one entry. And not only that, but every single order until the end of the giveaway, which is in only 14 days, gets random amounts of cash back in their orders. If you wanna enter, link is in the description or just go to lmpgear.com and get entered while you can because stuff will sell out and the giveaway will close very soon. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.